A lot of people ask, why should I have an interrotor kit? Is it going to increase horsepower? What does it actually do? Is it important? And then the next question is, once I get one, how do I install it? So the first question we're going to answer is, what is an interrotor kit? This is an interrotor kit right here. It comes with a performance CVI. I'll explain this in a second. On your interrotor kit, whenever you make revolutions on your engine, the magnet has to spin around the stator plates. Each time it makes a revolution, like when you accelerate on your throttle, this has to make one revolution around the stator plate. So you're making one, two, three. This magnet is a lot smaller than the stock one, so you can make more revolutions per second, about three times faster than the stock plates. You can put this on a Sierra 50 or any Sierra 50 clone engine. Let me show you what the magnet looks like on a stock engine. This right here is Patrick Stevens' uh, bike. We sponsor him, and he does a bunch of freestyle stuff. Check him out at patrickstevensfreestyle.com. He still has on the stock stator plate. But what he does with his stunts, he needs a lot of low RPM revving, so he doesn't need one. But if you want to get more acceleration, if you want to get more torque out of your bike, if you want to open it up to its full potential, then that's when interrotor kit comes in handy. This right here is the same stator plate that is right here. Okay? So when this goes and makes a revolution, it has to go around one time, two time, three time. If you had a little bitty magnet like this, now when you the drive shaft is still going to turn the same. So whenever this is turning, it's going to make revolutions three times faster, which means you're going to have more torque. It won't hurt your engine, so don't worry about that. It will give it a little more stress, but it's not going to be enough to where you're going to have to just start doing motor rebuilds all the time by any means. What the Hyper CDI does is uh, your bike comes with a stock CDI. The average rev limit on a stock CDI is about 7,500 RPMs. On uh, these CDIs, it's actually 12,000. So now what you can do is, uh, now that you've opened up the power of your pit bike a whole lot, you can actually take that power and go farther with it. So say first gear is going to 7,500, now if you can go to 12,000 RPMs, you can go a lot longer in that gear, which helps, which helps a lot with your, your top end speed. Um, so really just, an uh, interrotor kit, what it's going to do is basically just open up your bike to its full potential and make you go a lot longer in your gears. You get a lot more throttle response. And, you know, for the price, it's probably hands down the, the most effective thing you can do to your pit bike to give it more power. Um, when you go to install an interrotor kit, uh, there's a couple tools that you're going to need. One is you're going to have to take off the side plate, which, which I already did, that side cover. You're going to need a hammer. You're going to need a socket tool. You're going to need a flywheel puller. And you're going to need a hammer. Uh, I don't know what they call it. We just call it a hammer. So um, basically, what it is is it's an impact hammer. So when you when you impact it with this hammer right here on the screw that's right beneath right beneath here, what it does is it forces that screw back here to turn. So you need one of these because it's got it's got so much torque and pressure on it right now. You're not going to be able to get off with a conventional screwdriver. Flywheel puller we also sell. These, are, these run about 16 bucks. You can get this at your local Honda, you know, basically, or I think they're $17.95 at Home Depot or something. And, uh, you know, most of these other tools you should have. First thing you're going to <coughs> want to do is there's a screw right here and a nut. You want to take the nut off that. And then what you're going to do is once that's off, you're going to have to screw, reverse screw this in right here. And what it does is there's a little keeper on this that actually forces this to stay on the, uh, the, the drive rod and the actual rod of the engine. So what, what it does is when you reverse screw this in and you screw this right here, it actually forces this stator plate to force off the rod uh, over that keeper, allowing it to come off the engine. Other than that, all you got to do is take the impact hammer here, take off two bolts, there's one on the top and the bottom, basically slide the whole plate off, and you're going to slide this new plate right on, just like this in this position. Put your two screws back in, make sure they're tight, use the impact hammer to make sure they are tight. Put this piece right over the keeper, put it back on, hammer this down, make sure it's securely over that rod, and then uh, put your nut back on. Once you do that, you have uh, just a simple task of putting on your uh, CDI. Thanks, Chance. It's cell phone going off there. It's Warren G, man. Oh, now it's talking to you. Hello. Turn that off. Hello.
Cut, cut, edit. Uh-huh. Hello. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. The CDI is uh, is pretty simple to install. All you have to do is you got a few key things here. The white on the CDI is going to just plug right into the white on the inner rotor. Your red to white is going to plug into the black on the inner rotor kit. Now, the green here is going to connect to the CDI green. And your CDI could have a, a red wire or it could have a yellow wire. In either case, this yellow wire is going to connect to that. The last thing you got to do is make sure your ground's hooked up. And if you have a kill switch, which everybody is going to have one, the kill switch is going to have two wires. have a green wire and a red wire. The green wire is going to connect to this ground off the kill switch. And then you're going to have to, uh, at some point on this yellow wire, splice in the red wire from the kill switch to this wire. Once you plug these two into your CDI, green and yellow, your red should be connected to here from the kill switch. This is your ground. It should be connected to the ground that's right by the CDI. Your kill switch green will be connected to that. And then this uh, green and red wire will be connected to the inner rotor kit. Once you do this, take off the uh, spark plug, plug it into the actual coil, hold it up to the engine, kick it over, make sure you have spark. If you have spark, then you know you did it right. If you don't have spark, you may want to call us to, to just check your wiring and, and go over some diagnostic stuff. But it's pretty simple to install. It's pretty, uh, um, I mean, most anybody can do it. So uh, if you follow these instructions, then you shouldn't have any problem. So uh, get your inner rotor kit and uh, enjoy your bike.